Making the camera is one of the most central technical challenges to making any video game. Good camera systems are frictionless and make you forget that there is a system in place that moves the camera at all. They get out of your way, they feel effortless. I'm sure you felt like you're struggling against the game's camera before. From an unfitting zoom level, to consistently taking over and self-correcting their position. There are a lot of reasons a camera can be bad. Sometimes it's just small things that don't work. Like in the Souls games, if you click in the analog stick to log onto an enemy, and there's no enemy in range, the camera will snap behind the player. And it's not always obvious if there is an enemy in range or not, and you can't turn that option off either. And other times, the game's core idea, combined with the controller limitations, is just incompatible with any possible or like imagined camera system. Again, the Soul games, and pretty much all 3D action games, suffer from that. If you want to control a character, omnidirectional, independently of the camera, and it's pretty much impossible to also make full use of the face buttons, you only have two thumbs after all two sticks. So using a mouse and keyboard doesn't really provide a solution here either. Human hands are limited in the number of fingers we have, and there's also a mental limit to how many inputs you can do at the same time. But even putting aside these physical limitations, executing a complicated series of button presses or performing different functions with the left and right hand takes practice, and it might not be fun. It could turn the relaxing experience of playing the game into a chore, which is the opposite of what we want. With the environment of established control schemes as it is, certain problems just seem insurmountable with today's technology. Sure, a possible solution is to just fix the camera to the player, like in the wonderful 101, or top-down dual stick shooters like Enter the Gungeon or others. But those games offer a different experience to what I'm after in making my game. They are less atmospheric and about the environment and experiencing that, and much more about the game itself, the gameplay, it's arcade-like. Which is fun, but this is not only what I'm after. So it's not really an option for me. If movement and aiming are separate, then that means each will need to occupy one stick, and the result is that either the camera is fixed to the player, a fixed offset, and a fixed orientation, and it moves along with the movement stick, so it's coupled to that stick, like in the wonderful 101, or the camera and aiming share a stick, and then you end up with the typical third-person shooter controls. Or the third option is to just aim in the direction your character faces, like in games such as Bayonetta. But in those games you have a lot of targeting, retargeting by a sophisticated system programmed into the game. So when you move around, the algorithm decides which target you would want which mostly produces desirable results, but can lead to frustration. All schemes have trade-offs, and I think a third-person shooter suits what I want most, so that's what I will be going with. With all that out of the way, I started work on the camera system for my game this week. I'm using Godot 4.0, the most recent beta, and I'm using C-sharp, which is a huge pain, because the documentation is lacking and they changed everything. On the surface, making a third-person camera seems quite simple. You offset your camera's position from the player character, keep pointing it towards the player and just orbit it around the player, like a fixed point, according to input, and then just move your character based on the orientation of the camera. But if you ever tried implementing a third-person camera, you know how difficult it can be. The camera can rotate along two axes, with the vertical rotation having a constantly changing axis due to horizontal camera movement. At the same time, the horizontal movement needs to use the world up axis, not the one that the camera itself might have. And since the camera is not in the same position as the player, as opposed to a first-person camera, it's very easy to have a clip into the ground or walls or other objects that are around or enemies. And if you try to move the camera closer to the player to avoid this clipping, then it can potentially move into the player. And also, of course, you need to write some code to move the camera according to these inputs and make it feel good and not very choppy. And there are more complicated cases than just the floor or wall, 
which are quite continuous. Imagine for example there's a column, quite small column, in the middle of a room. If the camera moves into the space the column occupies, then what should happen? Should the camera be pushed towards the player or back behind the column, in which case he would only see the column? Or should it clip through? And if that column is very small, then you might want to just clip through it instead, or for example fade the column out. And what about other types of geometry that has no collision, for example tall grass or very dense fog? Those can block the view as well. All of these problems have solutions, and those solutions have their own downsides as well. So I will need to think about this and keep iterating on the camera controller for probably the remainder of development to get the best controller possible. Because I think the camera is one of the most central aspects of any game, so it really has to be solid. But for right now, I have a very simple camera that works. It's not very smart, but it feels good. And it's a perfect starting point to work on other aspects of the game. Put in some guns, work on shooting, make some enemies, start some simple levels, and then see which issues actually need fixing. So that's the plan for the future, and I hope you'll join me next week to see what I got done. Thank you for watching. <laughs>